Get our first milk. There you go, Abby. What are you gonna do with this first milk, Abigail? These first batches, I really wanna make some chev. Some chev, what is chev? It is a soft goat cheese. It is commonly referred to just as goat cheese. It is a very soft, usually comes in like a log shape. Abby's the one who decided to do goats. Abby's been studying for a year to get all prepared. She found some very good Nubian goats. We just picked them up today. And this is our first milking, first goat milking at Riverbend. Livin, is that what this one's name? Livin. Dad. Livin. Hello, Livin. How you doing, sweetie? Can you say hi? Hi. We got Livin and we got Isabella? Isabelle. 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 Hello, Weezabow. Okay, so you've got a pail there. Yep. Pour the milk into so it doesn't stay out exposed too long. Is that the idea? Yes, because if it does, it can collect the flavors of the barn, mm. which can make it not taste you good. Want to keep it nice and clean, all right. So I'm just straining it right away to yeah. keep it clean and then gonna put a lid. Okay. They say when you can create foam when you're milking, at least with cows, I sure don't know goats. Then, then you've got your milking down. You know what you're doing. Fast forward about two and a half months and we have now had the goats for a while. And what do you think about them? Are you liking them? I really like them. I'm excited to keep on going. Unlike Josh and my concerns, they have not gotten out once. They are now trained to electric wire and they stay in very nicely. So they're behaving themselves very nicely. What kind of goat are they? Nubians. Nubian goats and they're very well behaved, very nice goats, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> so have you made any changes to your milking program since you started milking? When I first started milking, I strained the milk right into the big bucket in the barn. Mm -hmm. But I decided to stop doing that and I did not detect a change in the flavor of the milk. And so it's just a lot faster just to pour it right in the bucket and then come down in the house and strain it. Strain it out right there. So you're gonna show us how to do that right now. So go ahead, you can go ahead. You've got your half gallon jars, you have your funnel, and then in here you actually have a filter and you just pour it right on through the filter. Jars. There we go. Now, something that's really interesting about goat's milk that I find is that it is much whiter than cow's milk is. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that too? I have. You can see it really well in the butter. Oh, the butter, butter is very white. It feels very different, but I've got to say from somebody who's skeptical of goat milk myself, that this tastes really good. It has like a little more minerally quality, a little bit salty to it. But besides that, I think it tastes really good, especially when it's fresh, I can almost not tell the difference. So today you're gonna show us how to make an herbed chev out of your goat cheese. And you've been doing quite a bit of this since you've gotten the goats. Mm -hmm. Do you make chev once a week, twice a week, three times a week? Around twice to three times a week. Two to three times a week. Okay, so we've been getting a lot of practice. We're ready to jump in. Yep. The shab we're making today has fresh herbs infused into it, so I'm out here in the herb garden to collect some. And I'll start with some thyme here. Just a little bit, doesn't need too much. Next, right here I have the oregano, which I find has really good flavor. And is really tasty. Some basil. And last of all, a little bit of sage. There we go. Abigail is going to take us through the different ingredients that we need for making our chef. Well, first we need to start with half a gallon of goat's milk. Ah, half a gallon of good, fresh, raw goat's milk. Now that one's chilled. That's not the one we just poured. Is it important for be, it to be chilled or can it just be any goat's milk? A lot of people just do it fresh from the goats. Fresh from the goat. Okay, there it's you have it. a lot faster to heat up. Lot fa yeah, that would be true. Very fast to heat up when it's already warm from the goat. Okay, so we have our milk. Uh, one cup of cow's cream. Okay, do we put that in right add now? Add some butter, uh, butter fat in, yes. And that's just like a heavy, if you have to go to the store to get it, then you'd just be getting like a heavy whipping cream? Yep, Okay. pretty much. Good, and then what other ingredients do we need? 
we have our fresh herbs, which I just picked, which we okay. will also just put right in the pot. Okay, just like that. Nice, look at that. That is a great way to infuse that herb flavor right into the milk, which is oh, so amazing. Tastes so good. We have some white wine vinegar, which we'll add in a little bit later. How much is this? One fourth a cup. Quarter cup, okay. And then a quarter teaspoon of salt. Okay, any particular salt? Any cooking salt will work. Okay, let's look at the supplies that we'll need. We'll need a thermometer to test the temperature with. Thermometers, when it comes to dairy making, are really important. So make sure you have a really good quality one and make sure it's calibrated and working properly because this is kind of an important part of any cheese making venture. Next, we'll need a larger spoon to stir the milk with while we're heating it. Okay a smaller spoon, which we will use to mix the salt in and test it with at the very end. Oh good, that's the part I wanna do. <laughs> we need a glass bowl to catch the whey when we're straining it, a cheesecloth, and something to hold the cheese above the whey. I just use a metal strainer. Okay, perfect. First step is to get your milk and your cream into the pot with your herbs so they can start infusing. Put your heat on to medium high and we're gonna heat that up to what temperature? 185 degrees. Okay, that is Fahrenheit. Keep your thermometer handy. Do you have to stir while you do that? You want to stir every few minutes to prevent uh, uh, skin from forming on top okay. of it. Obviously, if this has just come out of the refrigerator, this step is going to take a few minutes. So give yourself a few minutes and stir your milk every so often. Okay, let's check the temperature. We are at one. 180 degrees. 180, okay. So it's time to pull out those herbs. Oh, they smell really good. I wish you guys could smell this because it smells very herby in here with all of these fresh herbs in that milk. So I'm sure that flavor has gotten into the cheese. Now I can see why you left them all whole because it makes it a lot easier to get them out. Yes, definitely. If they were in little little bits. There's a few little ones. Does it matter if you get a few little bits in there? No, they're fine. They're just gonna add to the flavor of the cheese. That's yep. gonna be good. <laughs> What do you do next? Well, we're gonna to get to 185 before I put in vinegar, but we're there, so. We're there, okay. So next step is to put in our white vinegar. Should we turn vinegar. the heat off at 185? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Just a minute. Okay, put it in. And then just stir it in with seven quick strokes. And you're gonna see this change pretty quickly. In fact, if you see right now, it's already curdling. Next step is to turn it down low for two minutes and just kinda very gently stir it every couple of seconds for two minutes. Okay. Wow, that's changed a lot already. <laughs> All right, it's been two minutes and I've kept on stirring this, these cheese curds and I have some nice coagulation here. Ooh, coagulation. Coagulation. <laughs> nice cheese curd sitting at the top. Okay. And so, so next step is to take it off heat and let it sit for 10 minutes. Oh, so just let it sit in there for 10 minutes? Without the heat. Yep. Okay. Heat off. There we go. Let it sit. Okay. So the cheese is done sitting for 10 minutes. So our next step is to put it in our cheesecloth and strainer and to let it strain. So this is a pretty easy cheese to make. This is not very hard. It's a really easy cheese to start with. Heads up, you can also use cow's milk for this. It does not have to be goat's milk. However, it's not going to have the same flavor as the good goat's milk chef will but you can do this exact same thing with cow's milk. And yes, you can use store-bought pasteurized cow's milk to make this same thing. You can't make all the different cheeses with pasteurized store-bought milk, but you can make this one. So you should be able to go to the store and grab these ingredients and go ahead and make your own soft cheese. It's pretty amazing. This particular spoon is a slotted spoon that is just for cheese making and it is really, really handy for moments like this. You. Now you could of course also pour off your chev right on through if you have a big enough container. Um, but don't forget to keep your way. You can do all sorts of great things with it. And you might be surprised how good it tastes just plain. Now with the herbs in it, maybe, maybe not, but put it in smoothies, use it as a base for your soup. You can do all sorts of different things with it. What do we do now? Salt? Uh, first, we're just gonna let this drain for 10 minutes. Okay, before we salt it? Yes. Okay. Okay, so our cheese has been draining for about 10 minutes now and you can drain it longer if you want it to be you know, crumblier and drier. You could even 
straighten it off a little less if you wanted it to be really moist and spreadable. But this gives us a nice kind of spreadable solid cheese, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next step is to go ahead and get this into a bowl. You could put this into a mold if you wanted to make a really pretty like shape out of this. How much salt are we putting in? About a fourth of a teaspoon. Fourth of a teaspoon. Now, it would be really common to see a chef rolled into a log, maybe rolled into like black pepper or herbs on the outside, and then refrigerated that way until it gets a little more solid. And then, um, and then you can slice it and put it on salads or all different things. Uh, today, we're just kind of making it loose and then we're gonna taste it because it smells so good. <laughs> You can do all different things with this. Is there anything else? What do we, how do you like to eat this? I think it's really good on pizza, homemade pizza. It is incredibly good. Just dolloped onto homemade pizza. Ooh, I like it like that too. It's also really good just on crackers. Yes. Okay, ready to try it? Oh. That is so good. That is absolutely delicious. Hey, if you're interested in making your very own dairy products at home, check out this video right here where I make a whole bunch of dairy products. Everything that our family needs for one whole week in about two and a half hours. We'll see you there. <laughs>